This video content is strictly for educational purposes only. All demonstrations, techniques, and information provided in this video are meant to help you understand cybersecurity better. We strongly advise against using any of this information for illegal activities or unethical practices. Please like, subscribe, and comment. Welcome back. We're at it again. We're gonna we're gonna explore something called a mass. Uh, now, a lot of people may look at a mass. They look at Recon NG. And they think, oh, well, the tool does the same thing. I only need to know one over the other. And I would disagree. I would disagree. And the reason is, is because of the techniques they utilize to gather the information. While a lot of the information may be similar, how they gather that information is where the power comes from. For instance, Recon NG has modular architecture. It goes in and it grabs who is information. It tries to enumerate subdomains. It searches email addresses. Uh, it looks for a lot of that open source information that's currently on the web, whereas a mass looks at the DNS queries. It looks at public sources of information and gathers it from that perspective. So two different techniques utilizing where a mass uses DNS queries and the uh, recon ng uses more of that web recon kind of look at it, right? And so... Yeah, you could get similar information, but I would look at both if I was doing a, a OS intelligence gathering. So without further ado, let's look at a mass. Let's see how this plays out. All right, to get this thing started, we're going to open up our terminal, just like we always do. A mass should already be installed on your Kali box if you're running the newest version uh, as of 2024, right? So it's already in there. The first thing I want to do is I'm actually going to just type in a mass to make sure it's there. And then I can go through and identify what kind of attack I want to do or what kind of reconnaissance I want to do. Now, the first thing I like to show off is, of course, that TAC H, that help menu. And if we scroll up, we can see that a mass doesn't do a great job on this front. It gives us the how to start the program or show the program. It shows us the program usage message. But if you really want the information, you kind of have to go to their website to gather that information and see how to use the program. Not one of my favorite things. Uh, one of the things that I like about Linux more often than not is the capability to get a very quick, very detailed version of what's going on, more like a help sheet than anything else without actually having to go into a web browser to find that information out. Uh, so this is one thing I don't like about the tool, but but let's, uh, let's move on. All right, to get this thing started, we're going to open up our terminal, just like we always do. A mash should already be installed on your Kali box if you're running the newest version. Uh, as of 2024, right? So it's already in there. The first thing I want to do is I'm actually going to just type in a mass to make sure it's there. And then I can go through and identify what kind of attack I want to do or what kind of reconnaissance I want to do. Now, the first thing I like to show off is, of course, that TAC H, that help menu. And if we scroll up, we can see that a mass doesn't do a great job on this front. It gives us the how to start the program or show the program. It shows us the program usage message. But if you really want the information, you kind of have to go to their website to gather that information and see how to use the program. Not one of my favorite things. Uh, one of the things that I like about Linux more often than not is the capability to get a very quick, very detailed version of what's going on, more like a help sheet than anything else without actually having to go into a web browser to find that information out. Uh, so this is one thing I don't like about the tool, but, but let's, uh, let's move on. To start off, we're gonna do a mass. And then we're going to type in a noom. We're going to do a tack D onto it. And then what website we want to tackle. In my case, I'm going to do tesla.com. Uh, and let's see if we can't jump in on this one and see if it doesn't give us some juicy information uh, that we want. Uh, the scan does take a few minutes. It does take a few minutes. It's not exactly what I would call the quickest. Now it's starting to roll in and give me that enumeration for the domains as it's going through. Uh, and you can see here that it's giving me quite a bit of information. We've got an NS record. We can see the different NS records associated with it. We can see the nodes associated with it, the C names. Uh, and it's just a ton of information that it's scrolling through, much more than I think than what Recon NG gave me, because it's querying that it's querying that domain name server, right? And so it's just giving me a ton of information associated with this uh, domain. And so you can just see it coming in and it keeps coming in and it keeps coming in uh, as it goes through. Now I'm gonna hit Control C to interrupt it, let it do its thing uh, and let that enumeration finish because I wanna move on. Uh, let's say that we wanna do a passive enumeration. We don't wanna do anything active. We don't wanna do anything that offsets it. I could do a mass and then enum 
I can do a dash or a switch or even tack passive, whatever you want to call it, tack D. And then what I want to do is that IP address, that tesla.com. Uh, and this is going to go through and start running a passive scan associated with this website. Uh, while that's doing passive, I could also do an active. And I feel like we don't need to run that command. Uh, but passive should get us some good information if I'm trying to be sneaky about it. Um, I prefer passive, especially in a lab type environment, because we don't want to we don't want to upset the guys over there uh, as we're going through and grabbing this information. Uh, open source intelligence really does start with being able to utilize these tools and understand what they come out with, right? And so here's our passive is starting to come in already, and we're getting a lot of the same information. We're getting that in S records associated with it. We're getting some of the same C name records associated with it. Now you may be looking at this and thinking to yourself, what in the world is FQDN? Well, that's a fully qualified domain name, meaning that it has all the precursors. It has www, it's got the name, and then the .com or the .org or the .whatever. That is a fully qualified name that it's attributed to that. And so we can see tesla.com, fully qualified domain name through the NS adverts, and then it comes through with A1 through A12 or dash 12, acom or akam.net, and we see that as a fully qualified domain name as well. Uh, I'm trying to see if we saw anything else other than FQDN. I don't think we did. I think everything was a fully qualified domain name as we went through this. Um, so this is this is one more thing. So it's continuing to run. It's continuing to go through. I'm going to go ahead and interrupt it. I want to show you one of the features that I actually like about this, especially if you're trying to put together a report or you're trying to provide maybe uh, some substance to a to an essay or something else that you're doing for college, because honestly, that's that's my realm, right? Uh, we're gonna do a mass, just like always. We're gonna do our enum. Uh, we can do the passive again if we want to. We can do active, let's stick with passive, right? We're gonna do that tack D again and then to Tesla, but this time we're gonna do an output. So I'm gonna do a tack O for output. Uh, and I wanna put it into an output dot dot, just like that. And that's gonna give me kind of a, a graphical viewpoint when it's done. So I'm gonna let that run and let's see what happens with this. This is something that I really enjoy about this type of tool where it can kind of provide me something that's actually useful if I'm writing a report or if I'm writing some type of, of assets for an essay or some type of development within cybersecurity. So it's finished its scan. It's identified everything that I wanted it to identify. I can hit LS and here you can see I have that output dot dot. And if I wanted to, I could literally run that by doing a calc output dot dot, and it provides all of that juicy information for me. I can then extrapolate the data, put it into a report, do whatever I want to do with it. Uh, and it's just nice to have that output associated with it. But I want to point out how much data it literally provided me uh, going through this, right? So just a ton of information.